to the book of Philippians, chapter number 4. Philippians, chapter number 4. Philippians, chapter number 4. So before I preach, I have a two disclaimers to make. Disclaimer number one, like I always said, if there's anything I say that is different than what a pastor teaches or preaches, I'm wrong, he is right. Disclaimer number two, some of you might be offended by this message because I'm going to talk about politics. But, but at the end of the day, you know, I want you to have an open mind. Our role as Christians is supposed to be biblicist. We are supposed to care about what the Bible has to say rather than your stupid politics, okay? So Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and see and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, the title of the sermon tonight is called, The Christian Response to 2020. The Christian Response to 2020. Now, 2020 has been a great year, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to the 11th season of 2020, you know. So, let me just give you a quick rundown of the events that happened so far in the year of 2020. Of course, we have the COVID-19, the, coro the coronavirus global pandemic. Now... I know some of you do not, don't believe in the official st statistics, but this is the statistics given by World Armeter. Uh, there, are six, there are 46 million cases globally. There's over 1 million deaths. And as a result of that, we have a bunch of government shutdowns. We have unemployment skyrocket. We have quarantine. And they are talking about a second wave. You know, we, we, know, we know the country of France has shut down again, and then, govern, and, and then the governor, Holcomb, is talking about another shutdown in the near future. So, so, we have, so we have a global pandemic. In addition to that, we also have the Australian bushfire, right? We have the Australian bushfire. The country faced one of its most devastating wildfire seasons as the blazes continued from December 2019 into this new year and burned a record of 47 million acres, displaced thousands of people, and killed at least 34 people. And adding to that, we have the death of Kobe Bryant. The NBA basketball legend Kobe Bryant, he was killed along with his daughter and seven others when their helicopter crashed in California on January 26th. And then we also have the impeachment on President Donald Trump. The president faced an impeachment trial in January on charges that he asked Ukraine to investigate former, former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. And, and as a result of the coronavirus, we had the stock market crash. <laughs> the, the, the stock market, uh, especially the Dow Jones Industrial Average, has suffered its worst single-day job ever on March 9th. And there's another stock market crash just this past week. And then we have the interest rate drop below zero. And the, the, the Fed are, pump, are pumping a lot of stimulus in this economy. And then we have the stupid Black Lives Matter protest. You know, the police involved killing of George, of George Floyd this year sparked a wave of riots across the world. Listen, the BLM movement is junk. It's just an excuse to spark violence, okay? Obviously, we believe in equality. You know, we, we believe we should, we should treat whatever race in the same way. But the BLM is using politics to spark violence. Adding upon all that, we have the murder hornets arrive in the U.S., have you heard about that? This, this invasive insect known as the Asian giant hornet, it's come, come from Asia. <laughs> I, I preach against myself. So this hornet was spotted for the first time stateside when they invaded Washington state, measuring up to two inches. The hornet can wipe out the entire bee colonies within hours. 
And then we have the Beirut explosion. You know, Beirut is Lebanon's capital. There, there was a massive explosion at the Beirut port on August 4, killing at least 190 people. And then we have uh, the West Coast wildfires, you know, as sparked uh, especially from California to the Washington state. Adding all that, just that, that, that's not enough. We have President Trump test positive for COVID-19. Pre President Trump announced on August 2nd that he and the First Lady tested positive for coronavirus. He was, hospita he, he was hospitalized for three days um, and before he was discharged to continue his recovery at the White House. In addition to that, there's an asteroid called the God of Chaos could hit the Earth in 2068. So there's a new study came out just a couple days ago, it's, it's a very recent news, that an asteroid named after the Egyptian God of Chaos may hit the Earth in 2068, okay? And then, of course, we have the election coming up, Biden versus Trump. So, 2020, great year, isn't it? <laughs> so, as a result, panic attacks are reported to be increasing during the COVID-19 as people are increasingly worried about their health, their well-being, their financial wealth. And then the internet searches for the, for the terms anxiety or panic in combination with attack have risen significantly in the U.S. since March 2020. The divorce rate has spiked because people are spending more time with their spouse. Everyone is freaking out. So welcome to 2020. So, so, the, so the question I want to ask you is, what do we do about it? What should Christians do about it? Unfortunately, Christians, uh, most Christians have been such a good testimony throughout all this. They are freaking out about the COVID, about the election, about the politics. You know, most Christians are no different than the world. They are, they are as fearful, they are as worried, they are as concerned with the world. But that's not what the Bible teaches. So tonight I want to talk about the Christian response to 2020. Point number one, Christians should worry about nothing. Christians should worry about nothing. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Look at verse number 6. Philippians 4 verse number 6. The Bible says, be careful for what? Not, not. Nothing. Now the, now, the definition of the word care in the King James Bible means, means worry. Now, you don't have to turn there, but the Bible says in Matthew 13, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. Talking about the worry, the concerns, the care of this world, and the, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world, and he becomes unfruitful. We know that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tempted to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, they, they, tell King Nebuchadnezzar, they tell King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to worry. They, don't have, they are not concerned about what he's going to answer to the king. No matter what, he's not, he's not going to bow down to this false king. In Mark chapter 4, we know that there, there's a storm on, on the boat on the boat and on the ship and Jesus Christ was falling asleep was falling asleep and the disciples is asking Jesus master cares not that we perish don't you worry that we perish right I, I, are you concerned about it do you worry about it so we know in the King James Bible the word care means to worry so the Bible is uh, take, uh, very plainly and tell you be careful for nothing Translate, don't be full of care, don't be full of worry, don't worry about anything. Now, in context, we know the Bible is talking about we should take control of the things we can control and don't worry about the things we can't control because the Bible talks about planning, right? The Bible talks about preparation. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. The Bible is not talking about irresponsibility, okay? By the way, go to Matthew chapter 6. Keep your finger in Philippians chapter 4. Go to Matthew chapter 6. The Bible does not teach irresponsibility, but the Bible does teach that we shouldn't worry about the, the things we can't control. You know, throughout 2020, there are a lot of things we can't control, so the Bible says don't worry about it. Be careful for nothing. By the way, if the Bible says don't worry about anything, and if you worry, that's a sin, isn't it? If the Bible commands don't worry. And not only the Bible says don't worry, the Bible even teaches you shouldn't even think about it. 
Matthew chapter 6, go to tw verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, and else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, notice this phrase, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, not, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. The Bible does not only teach you, we shouldn't worry about the things we can't control. The Bible even says, we shouldn't even think about the things that we can't control. He's talking about uh, what we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we shall wear. These are the things we can control. The thing is, if you worry about these things, if you worry about the things you can't control, you are saying, I don't believe that God is in control. See, the Bible is very clear to tell you, be careful for nothing. In fact, the Bible even steps up and tells you, don't even think about it. Take no thought for your life, because the life is more than meat, more than drink, and more than raiment. Look at verse number 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they, much better than they? The Bible says the birds in the air, they don't do anything, but God still take care of them. And we as human beings are, are God's greatest creature. Okay, God will take care of us because we are made in His image. Look at verse 27. Which of you by, again this phrase coming up again, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now this verse should be the life verse of every short person. <laughs> which of you by thinking about it, by worrying about it, can grow taller? The answer is no, because that's not something you can control, right? We shouldn't even think about it. Look at verse 28. And why, again, this phrase, take e thought for raiment. So you ladies, don't spend an hour picking up the clothing. <laughs> don't even take thought for raiment. Like, uh, no. This is not what the verse is teaching, but <laughs> it's funny. Make me think about it. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. See, these flowers, these lilies, they don't do anything, but God still clothe them. God still take care of them. Verse number 30. Here's the conclusion. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So the question is, do you really believe that God is able to deliver you from this trouble, all these concerns, all these worries? If you can control it, then why are you worrying about it? Verse 31, therefore, notice this phrase, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So the Bible says, don't even worry about that. Don't even think about it, because God will take care of you. You know, one of my favorite promises is, is found in Psalm 37. The Bible says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So my question to you, Christian, is why are you so worried about 2020? Why are you so worried about all these events coming up? Isn't life more than this? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 33. But seek ye the first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's, he's, he's in context, he's talking about uh, your, your your life, your ye, uh, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or what ye shall be clothed. You know, if you truly seek after the kingdom, of God, God will take care of you. God will not uh, leave you begging bread. As a general conclusion, the Bible says in verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So the Bible is teaching you that don't even think about what's going to happen tomorrow, because every day has its own evil to deal with, right? 
as Christians, we should just go one day at a time. Don't worry about it, because that's something you can't control. Again, take control of the things you can control and leave the rest to God, because if you are worrying about this, if, if you even think about that, you are telling God, I don't believe that God is in control, and we know that the life is much better than all these. So my question to you is, why are you so afraid? Why are you so worried? Can you control what's happening? If you can control it, then why are you worrying about it? You may ask, how do I know Christians are worried, Christians are afraid? Because that's all they are talking about these days. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right? When you are around people, they are just talking about politics. They are talking about the virus. You know, their mind is filled with it. Again, I'm not saying you should, you should never talk about it, but if someone minds is consumed by it, I don't think that's a right mindset as Christians. The Bible said we shouldn't even think about it. You know, can you control the coronavirus? I don't care if it's a biological weapon from China, okay? I, I mean, I, I don't think so, but if that's the case, I don't care. You know, God is going to take care of it. It is in control. Now, why on the subject of the coronavirus? We know that the Bible says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and of love and of a sound mind. You think the world had a sound mind by stockpiling piling toilet papers? You think, the, you think the world has a sound mind by, by, by using all the coin? We have a coin shortage? That's stupid. The feds are printing money like crazy. Who? Anyway, don't get me started. We as Christians should have the spirit of the sound mind. The world is giving up to badness these days. They're calling evil good and good evil. Now some people even are so stupid they think the coronavirus comes from 5G. What does 5G have to do with coronavirus? It's just stupid. They're given to madness. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Do you know what that means saying? If we have the spirit of fear, that's not of God. Now, I'm not saying the fact of being afraid is a sin. No. Now, let me just draw a, a comparison with bitterness. There's nothing wrong with bitterness. Because most of you have bitter things happen to you, right? But the Bible says, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you. So having bitter things happen to your life is not a sin, but don't let that root spring up and produce bad fruit. Make sense? Same thing with fear. Being afraid yourself is not a sin, it's what you do with that fear. Like, like David said in Psalm 56, he said, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. That's a good response to fear. But if your fear produces bad fruit, if your fear becomes the spirit of fear, and I believe worrying is the spirit of fear, that's a sin, right? Because God has now given us the spirit of fear. What are you doing with your fear? Turn to God. Can you control it? Then why are you worrying about it? Go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. See, a lot of Christians are worrying about the things that you can't control. The coronavirus, the world is losing their mind. You know, the world is arguing, they are fighting, they are thinking about overthrowing the government. It's madness. So, now let's move on to the election, okay? Let's talk about politics. The thing that really takes off people. Now, some people may say you, you should never preach on politics. But the problem is, if the politics is in contrary with the word of God, I'm going to preach against it. You know, am I supposed to sugarcoat what the Bible says? Am I commanded to cry aloud and spare not? You know, so several weeks ago, I was knocking people's doors trying to share the gospel. I was knocking a door. I was asking him, you know, if you happen to die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And he said no. So I shared with him a couple of verses. I shared with him that we are all sinners and all sinners deserve to go to hell. And then I read him Revelation 21, verse number 8. Let's take a look at it. Revelation 21, verse number 8. The Bible says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the reason I share this verse is to, is to tell him that, you see, everyone deserves to go to hell, even all liars, right? Now, do you know what he, do you know what he, what, what he told me? He, he told me, do you, do you, 
Do you mean that all, all politicians are going to hell after writing this verse? <laughs> so, so then I kind of went off a rabbit trail. I kind of explained to him. So, so, so let's dive into this verse, all right? But the fearful, people are afraid of the truth, right? Most politicians are afraid of the truth. And unbelieving, you know, most politicians are not born-again Christians. And the abominable, Joe Biden, pedophile, that, that's the abomination of, of this world. And murderers, okay, all these abortion advocates, they are preaching murders. And whoremongers, okay, that, that, that just sums up both Biden and Donald Trump. That's not both. Again, you say you, 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 you should not preach against Biden and Trump. Here, here's my problem. Are you saying John, John the Baptist is wrong for confronting Herod? Are you saying Elijah is wrong for confronting Ahab? Are you saying it's wrong for Moses to confront Pharaoh? So if the politics is in contrary to the Bible, I'm going to preach against it. And both Biden and Trump are adulterous. And according to the word of God, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Here's what I'm telling you. I don't care about their politics. If they are living under the law of God, they shall, they shall be put to death. That's what the word of God teaches. If you are not okay with it, you should read your Bible. Okay? Now, let me make a disclaimer. Among the two, among Biden and Trump, I'd rather a homemonger to be the president than for a pedophile to be a president. But the matter of fact is they are both wicked. Okay? America deserves better candidates. We should not just sugarcoat, you know, everything. What does the Bible say about Joe Biden? He's a reprobate. He's a, he's a hair-sniffing freak. You know? The Bible describing reprobate as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God had given them given over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and merciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things, don't miss this, are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You know what that verse tells me? Joe Biden deserves to, deserves to die. He's worthy of death because he's a pedophile. By the way, you can't reform a pedophile. They, they are implacable. They are, they are beguiling, unstable souls. You know? By the way, go to Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Again, I said, among the two, I'd rather a homemonger to rule than for a pedophile to rule. But matter of fact is, America is going to hell no matter who gets elected. So why are you so worried about it? Why are you so concerned about it? The Bible says... Put not your trust in princes, nor in the sons of men, in whom there is no help. So, listen. I don't care who, who, who you vote. You know, the matter of fact is, America is going to hell no matter who gets elected. If Biden gets elected, it's, it, it's, it's, it's getting worse. If Trump gets elected, it's getting worse. Okay? Some of you are putting too much trust in princes. Because that's all you talk about. That's, your mind is filled with this kind of junk, okay? Now, what about Biden gets elected? It's bad, right? If Biden gets, gets elected, it, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Now, here's what's going to happen if Joe Biden gets elected. I'm going to pray for him. <laughs> here's what I'm going to pray for him. Psalm 1, 109, look at verse number 6. Psalm 1, 109, verse number 6. The Bible says, Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Let his days be filled, and let another take his office. So the context of this verse is actually quoted in Acts, talking about Judas. Here's the, here's the thing. Judas and Biden, they are both reprobates. So, so what is the psalmist's prayer? Let his days be filled, and let another take his office. Taking down and replaced with a better person. That's what, that's what the Bible says, isn't it? 
Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of the, the desolate places. Let the, the, like the, like the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the strangers spoil his labor. So the Bible doesn't go easy on those people who hate God. Listen, breaking news. Psalm 100, 100, 109 is in the Bible and in his holy scriptures. See, some of you are so concerned with the politics. Again, I believe we can have better candidates. I, 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 I'm not saying, listen, I agree some values of President Trump. You know, he believes a lot of right things, but we should not sugarcoat all these bad things he's done, okay? And Biden is worse. And some of you are having too much allegiance to a country. Listen, don't get me wrong. I think you should have a love of your country and of your countrymen. But ultimately, our full allegiance should be to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, here's what the Bible says about nations. Isaiah, 4, Isaiah chapter 40. The Bible says, all nations before him, all nations before God are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. See, I'm not saying you shouldn't love your countrymen. I'm saying some of you are placing too much allegiance to a country rather than to the Lord Jesus Christ. And all nations to God is nothing. It's less than nothing. Okay, Here's, that's what the Bible says. And some of you are so concerned about politics. Let me just give you an example. The confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. A lot of Christians are, are very high because he got, she got confirmed as one of the judges. But here's the problem. You might not like it. The Bible says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. The Bible says women are not supposed to usurp authority over the man. So why are Christians so hyped about, the, about her confirmation and forget about what the Bible says. In fact, the Bible says if a woman rule, it's a curse from God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 3, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. The Bible says if a woman rule over it, it's a curse of God. So a lot of Christians are celebrating the curse of God. Now, I'm not denying she has good values. She believes in some right things. But are you supposed to throw away what the Bible says? The Bible says women are not supposed to usurp authority over the men. I don't care how many things she believes right. She's not right in front of God. Because the Bible says a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the men. So I'm not supposed to throw away the rest of the Bible because of a woman believing some good things. It's the same thing with a woman preacher, okay? The Bible is clear, women shouldn't be pastors. I don't care how many things she believes right, she's a false prophet. But because women shouldn't be in the past in the first place. Am I supposed to throw away the rest of the Bible because of your stinking politics? And the Bible is clear, we should fight the good fight, right? We should fight the good fight. Remember, Paul, at the end of his life, he said, I have fought a good fight. Now, the, the good is not, is not saying that he has fought well. Paul is saying he has fought a good fight. The good is actually, mo is actually modified the word fight. Because you can, you, can, you, you can fight well, but you end up in the wrong fight. That's why, that's why the Bible, Paul is admonishing Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So you can, you can be fighting, but you, 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 may, you may even be fighting well, but you can end up in a wrong fight. Let me give you some of the examples. Rebel against wearing mask. How about that? Listen to me. Is wearing mask a sin? So why rebelling us? So, to, to me, to me, it's it's mind-boggling with all the rebellious, stupid, rebellious spirit among the Christians. If that's not a sin, then why are you rebelling against it? Christians are thinking about they are throwing throwing the government because of that. Listen to me: Is wearing mask a sin? If it's not a sin, then why 
then you should submit to the government, right? Is it the same? No, it's not. Same thing. Wives, if your husband tells you something to do, that's not a sin. Obey him. That's what the Bible says. Where does all that rebellious spirit come from? They are fighting the wrong fight. You might, some of you might fight the fight pretty well. Listen, I don't like wearing a mask. But if a restaurant says I have to wear a mask to enter, and then, and, then, and then I'm not contagious after I sit down, I'll, I'll wear a mask when I come to the restaurant, okay? Because that's not the fight that I want to fight. Because we wrestle not against um, flesh and blood, flesh and blood, and some of the Christians they criticize churches for going online only. Now here's the thing: there are a lot of churches I know they only go online for a couple of weeks. That's not for Second Day assemblies. So why are you criticizing other churches for going online only? Why are you criticizing churches for having a drive-through service only? That's not a business. That's not, that's not your church. We are independent. Stop fighting the wrong fight. By the way, I get it. People are concerned about the election, who, who, who get elected. But when you start to degrade people because of that, when you start to making fake news because of that, that's very low. So, so see, you can you can fight, you can fight pretty well, but you maybe end up in the wrong fight. And, and the Bible says, you know, the care of this world, the worry, the deceit of this world will choke the actual word of God, and you will become unfruitful. Don't let that happen. The question to ask you is, by the way, go back to Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four. The question to ask yourself is, I don't care what's happening. Can you control it? Ask yourself, can you control it? then why are you worrying about it? Then why do you even think about it? Why do you let your mind so consumed by it? Why are you fighting the wrong fight? Do you think by, by fighting against wearing masks can let the COVID nonsense disappear? Do you think it gave us a good testimony in front of, in, in front of, the, um, in front of the unbelievers? So the worst thing we can do at this trying time in 2020 is to act. Just like the world. So point number one, Christians should worry about nothing. Don't even think about it. Point number two, Christians should pray about everything. Christians should pray about everything. Now listen to me. Some of you may not have you about what, 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 what I just said, but I make no apology of what I, say or what I said or what I'm going to say, because that is the word of God. It might, it might not be conformed to your politics by your feelings, but I believe the Word of God, okay? Point number two, Christians should pray about everything. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. Philippians 4, verse number 6. Be careful for nothing, notice, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So, you say, I do worry. I'm afraid. What, what do you do about it? See, instead of worry about or thinking about things you can't control, you can pray to a God who can control. See, a lot, lot of you are still consumed of the things. You are fighting the wrong fight. You are fighting against masks. You are, you are overthrowing the government. You are criticizing other people. You are degrading. You are making fake news. But you are doing this for the things you can't control. But why don't you just pray to a God who has the control? The Bible says, casting all your care, casting your worry upon him, for he careth for you. The Bible says, casting all your care. You know, Christians should be absolutely pray for everything. Now, a very famous verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Bible says, pray without ceasing, right? Don't stop praying. Now, this verse does not teach you, you should pray every single second. It, you know, this is the same... Reasoning like if I if if I say don't stop reading your Bible, I'm not telling you to read your Bible every second. What I'm telling you is have a habit, right? Be consistent. Same thing. Pray without ceasing. Now, how do you pray without ceasing? Very easy. Turn your complaints and cares and worries into prayer, and you will end up praying without ceasing. Very simple. You know, because in the first, the first part of that chapter, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. The Bible says, in everything by prayer and supplication. You know, how do you worry about nothing? Pray to God. Every, every time you worry, every time you are afraid, you pray to God. 
Because when you turn all of your murmurings, all of your complaints, all of your gossipings into prayer, you will end up being a prayer warrior. Guaranteed. So instead of complaining, instead of worrying, instead of just uh, just backbiting other people, why don't you just pray to a God who can control? The Bible says in Psalm 34, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of, of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I don't care how bad 2020 is, God has the promise. He will deliver us out of it, if you are simply faithful. We are living in Goshen, my friend. It's a spiritual place where God is. The Bible says the Lord is far from the wicked, but He heareth the prayer of the righteous. So why don't you just cast your hair upon Him? Why are you so worried? You know, because that's all you are talking about. I don't want to be with negative people. That makes me negative as well. So instead of Instead of worrying about the things you can't, you can't control, why don't you just pray to God who can control? And the Bible is telling you to be pray for everything. In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make requests, make known your, your requests unto God. Because when you turn your complaints and cares and worries into prayer, you will end up praying without ceasing. Try that. So I said... How should Christians respond to 2020? Number one, Christians should worry about nothing. Number two, Christians should pray about everything. Point number three, Christians should be thankful in all things. Christians should be thankful in all things. Look at verse number six. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by, but in everything by prayer and supplication, don't miss this. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, I love the King James Bible because the Bible says we should be thankful in everything. The Bible does not say be thankful for everything. See, we as Christians can absolutely be thankful in everything. We should be thankful not because, not because something good has happened. We should be thankful because God is in control. We should be thankful in everything. Because a lot of you are only thankful because some kind of blessing or some, some, some kind of good thing is taking place. But the Bible does not teach that. The Bible says you should be thankful in everything. The Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, the Bible says, In everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Some of you want to seek the will of God, right? What does the Bible say about the will of God? Pray without ceasing and everything gives thanks. For this is the will of God. So why are you so worried about it? Why are you freaking out about politics? Why are you freaking out about the virus? Why are you fighting the wrong fight? We should be thankful in everything. You know, sometimes you might think there's nothing to be thankful for. But if you are saved, you can always be thankful for your salvation. Even in the worst days, even in the worst days, there's always something to look forward to. Now... In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible describing, uh, it's a famous chapter uh, upon the hall of faith. It's a famous chapter upon the hall, the hall, the hall of faith. Now some of these uh, saints, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with a sword. Do you know what they think about this world? The Bible says, of whom the world was not worthy. They wander in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us. So the thing is, if you can't be thankful for everything, why don't you thank, be thankful for God preparing a better place for us? Because we are not looking for this world. Because we seek a better country. So why are you be so afraid of what's happening? 2020, no big deal. One day at a time. It's like Brother Ernie preached this morning, you know, one day at a time, living by faith. Because this world was not worthy. You can absolutely be thankful in all things, even in the darkest times. Go back to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 4. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, 4, verse number 4. The Bible says, Philippians 4, 4, verse number 4. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say, rejoice. 
And early in that book, Paul is saying that, you know, um, uh, and I daring do rejoice and yea, and will rejoice. Now, here's what I was teaching us. Rejoicing, you know, being thankful is a choice. See, being joyful is not because of some good things happen. It's, it's, it's a state of happiness without circumstances. Because Paul is saying he is rejoicing now, but he chose to rejoice in the future. Paul is saying, I choose to rejoice in the Lord always. And we should choose to be thankful in the Lord always. Because there is always, God is preparing a better place for us. And all things work together for good to them that love God. The Bible does not say all things are good. The Bible says all things work together for good. And because of that, we should be thankful in everything. And what's going to happen if you are thankful in everything? Look at chapter 4, verse number 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7. The Bible says, And, don't miss this, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, a lot of you, now, don't be confused with the peace with God and the peace of God. Because there's a difference between the peace with God and the peace of God. The Bible says when you get saved, we are justified by faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Just because you have the peace with God doesn't mean you have the peace of God. A lot of Christians are so freaking out, are so worried, you know, that they, they, they are doing everything the world is doing. They don't have the peace of God. And, and the Bible is giving you the promise if you choose to pray about everything, if you choose to be thankful in all things, if you, if you don't worry about anything, you will have the peace of God which passes all understanding. I don't care what the world is doing. The Word of God. The peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. Why? Through Jesus Christ. He has delivered, from, he has delivered you out of, out, of, out of this world because we have already overcome the world. So why are you worried about what the world is doing to you? By the way, Paul wrote about the peace of God, the peace of God in prison. Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians in prison. So why are you so worried about it? You ask, what if Biden got elected? America is going to hell. <laughs> what if Trump gets elected? It's, it's doomed either way. You know, the Bible, the Bible says, the, you might ask, how can I be thankful if, you know, these people get elected? I'll be happy. Because, you might ask me why, because, because the darker the world is, the lighter, the brighter the light is going to shine. Amen. Right. That's something you can be thankful for. I don't care who gets elected. I don't care who gets elected. No. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to go off the rabbit trail. I'll, I'll control myself, all right? In Daniel chapter 11, the Bible is, is prophesying the end time. The Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So I don't care how bad the word is. The word is getting worse. The Bible already prophesied that. Pastor is preaching a series on the book of Daniel. You know, the end of the world has already been prophesied. Jesus Christ will be anointed as the Most High. At the end time, we shall do exploit. So I don't care who gets elected. We can do exploits as God's people. Amen. See, we as God's people should not... Uh, I mean, all, all these old-time preachers say this. We should not put our trust in the White House, but in the Church House. Amen. So we, as God's people, should be strong, no matter what the situation is, and do exploits, and be thankful for the persecution, because some of you need it. Maybe God will let Biden to get elected, just, just to let some of the Republican Christians to get on fire for God. So if you're not happy with it, I don't know what to do with you, but <laughs> everyone is laughing, okay? I, I, I'm sure this sermon might be censored on Facebook and YouTube. So here you go, Mark Zuckerberg, okay? If you want to put it, take it down, you can take it down, I don't really care. The word of God is getting, just going to get out anyway. I'm preaching to the, to the camera. Anyway. Be thankful for the persecution. Some of you need it. You know, American Christian is the most lukewarm Christians in the world. 
They are seated. I'm Chinese, I can say that, okay? It's not racial. <laughs> See, at the beginning of the early church, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, what did Jesus Christ tell the apostles? Go into all the world, right? Go to Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What did they do? God told them to spread out, go out from Jerusalem, and they stay in Jerusalem. So in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, they choose to stay, and God told them to get out. But in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says there was a great persecution, and they were all scattered. See, some of you are so, are so complacent in where you are at today. Maybe God will allow this coronavirus to happen to get the fire from you. Maybe God wants to kick at your rear end and actually do something. See, so some of you are so worried, and how can you be thankful in everything? Because the worst in the world can be is to kill us. But the Bible says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So, so if you can be thankful for everything, why can't you be thankful that you are going to heaven when you die? You are seeking a better country. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding to the work of, work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why are you so afraid? Why can't you be thankful in these little things? Why can't you be thankful for your family? For this church family? For, for a pastor who's not afraid to preach the word of God? For people who care about you? For the Lord Jesus Christ? Some of you need to pray that you need to pray to God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Because some of you have, have forgotten where you used to be. Be thankful in all things. So I said, point number one, Christians should pray about, Christians should worry about nothing. Point number two, Christians should pray about everything. Point number three, Christians should be thankful in all things. Last point, point number four. Christians should think only on good things. Christians should think only on good things. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8, Finally, brethren... Whatsoever things are true. Now, you can get more true than the Word of God. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, talking about serious, of a good character. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, maybe I'm, maybe I'm mad and crazy, but none of these things describe the politics it, none of these things describe the coronavirus. None of these describe the Fox News, CNN, all these junks. The Bible is saying we as Christians should think on these things. Because we, sh we as Christians should have a good thought life. A lot of Christians are thinking about bad things. But the Bible says all that is in the world. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So why are you thinking? Why, why do you let your mind consume with all these negative thoughts and influence who you are? Go to Proverbs chapter, chapter 23. This will be the last place we're going to turn. Proverbs chapter 23. See, we as Christians should, have, should, should protect our mind. Should protect our thought. Now the Bible says, um, for the weapons of, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, uh, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, right? We should guard our mind and thought and think only on good things. Thinking about the word of God, thinking about things that are true, that, are, that is honest, that, that is just, that is pure. That is lovely. That is, good. that is of a good report. Those things which you have both heard, learned, received, and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So how can you have the peace of God? Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. Be thankful in all things and think on good things. And God will provide you the, the peace of God. 
Proverbs chapter 23, look at verse number 7. Proverbs 23, verse number 7. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 7. The Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So the Bible says in this verse that you are what you think. Isn't it? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, some of you are accused of being overly negative, overly nagging, gossiping, filling the bad blanks. The thing is, that's because you are thinking on these things. You are thinking on politics. You are thinking too much on what's going on. You are thinking too much on the, 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 this, the, all, all these events in 2020. But the Bible says don't even think about it. Think only on good things. Think upon the promise of God. See, the, the, the way to avoid negativity is think on good things. Reflecting upon the promise and the word of God. So Christians should think only on good things. So how do we respond to this 2020? I said point number one, Christians should worry about nothing. Point number two, Christians should pray about everything. Point number three, Christians should be thankful in all things. Point number four, Christians should think only on good things. Now to end this message, I want to let you know that God is still in control. Let me, let me just read you a couple of verses. Now, I read a lot of verses to you tonight because I want to, to think on the Word of God, to think on the promise of God. The Bible says in the book of Deut Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number 8, And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, the world cannot provide peace, but the prince of peace can. The Bible says in John chapter, chapter 16, verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, talking about Jesus Christ, in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So why are you so afraid? What are you worrying about? Can you control it? Can you really control about what's happening? Can you, can you stop the virus? Can you control the rulers of the darkness at work? You can't, right? But there's a God that can so why not cast all your care upon Jesus Christ? And remember, God is still in control, even in 2020. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your word, and so, so much, thank you so much for your promise. Help us don't lose sight upon you. I know the word sometimes can be enticing, sometimes can draw us into the things that's, that doesn't even matter, Lord. But Lord, help us have a good mindset. Help us pray. And teach us how to pray. Help us be thankful. Sometimes we, we don't know how to be thankful for things that, that's bad. But Lord, just open our eyes, Lord. Let us see your grace and give us strength to, to power us through our Christian life. And I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.